so this is lecture 5 uh, on this particular course on analog mos circuit design in the last lecture that is uh, in lecture 4 i have talked about the biasing arrangements for a mos device so uh, for quick uh, recapitulation uh, let me just one second show you a typical uh, biasing circuit for a an mos device which looks something like that so these are the three terminals hopefully you can now identify three terminals properly this one is the gate this one is drain and this one is source so let me mark it over here gate drain and source and you are applying one constant voltage source in series with the signal that you want to amplify like this between the gate to source terminal so i may call this voltage source to be v1 and let's consider that this is my time varying signal that is v in so source end is grounded and between drain to ground we have one drain resistance rt and in order to provide sufficient bias over here so another voltage source is added like this v2 this one is rt so this was the circuit that we discussed last day so we have a mos device having three terminals gate drain and source right now we are just neglecting the body or the bulk or assuming that this body and source they are tied together so ultimately this four terminal device mos device is converted to a three terminal device having these three terminals gate drain and source and we are going to apply some signal at the gate end and we would like to amplify or magnify that particular signal so as you understand amplification means we are having a signal like this let me consider a sinusoidal signal like this which is nothing but my small signal or the time varying signal v in and i would like to magnify this amplitude by means of this device by means of this mos without distorting its shape or frequency so if this particular signal is having a frequency of say f test then the output signal will also be having the same frequency so if i have a sinusoidal signal over here i will also be having another sinusoidal signal over here there is a change in amplitude and sometimes there is a change in the phase value as well so if i consider that okay this is my output signal i am going to take this output from this particular terminal from the drain end which is v out then i should expect that v out must look something like that a magnified waveform like this now the amount of magnification or amount of amplification can be determined from the property of this uh, mos device as well as from the resistance the drain resistance that you are taking in this particular circuit now last day we have already established that in order to accomplish that particular job that means if i have a signal like this input signal v in which varies with time and if i would like to magnify this variation then just by simply plugging in that particular signal to the gate terminal of the device will not serve our purpose so for this reason we need to provide sufficient bias that means we have to set up certain conditions before the amplification operation to take place so this is nothing but already we have mentioned this one in the last class if i once again take a look at the id vgs characteristics which looks something like that from 0 to vth there is no current and then the current increases in a parabolic fashion so accordingly we have to ensure that even if the signal is absent whenever this v in is absent we need to provide or we need to keep the value of this vgs at a sufficiently high value which should be greater than the threshold value so i may select this one to be over here let me consider this is the point 
this is the point which corresponds to some vgs let me call this vgs to be say v dash and this id say i dash so even if the signal is absent even if this small signal this v in is absent the time running signal is absent then also i have to expect that between the gate to source we have to have a voltage difference of v dash and the corresponding current corresponding drain current which flows through this device must be equal to i dash so that condition has to be established and this phenomenon is known as the biasing now we have also mentioned that in this particular case we are assuming that the mos is operating in the saturation region and you know the corresponding relation between the current and the voltage in the saturation region of a mosfet which is nothing but i is equal to half mu n c ox w by l into vgs minus vth whole square so right now i'm just neglecting this channel length modulation and if you like to incorporate the channel length modulation then 1 plus lambda vts term will be multiplied with this expression so i is given by half mu n c ox w by l vgs minus vth whole square in the saturation region and this happens if and only if the drain to source voltage is greater than or equal to gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage and in order to accomplish this particular condition to hold good we are adding another battery in the drain circuit so this v1 is required to make this particular device on or in order to create the channel this v1 is applied over here between gate to source and we require this v2 that particular battery dc voltage source in the drain circuit so that this condition holds good that means the vds is greater than or equal to vgs minus vts and that is the condition of saturation now once we have this particular arrangement then we can provide an input signal over here v in so that we can have a corresponding output signal v out now as you understand if v in is absent then because of v1 the corresponding gate to source voltage is constant and that is nothing but v1 and from this equation it is quite apparent that if the gate to source voltage is constant in the absence of any time varying signal v in then the current id is also constant on the other hand if the input signal v in is added with the battery v1 in series like this then the corresponding current the drain current will also increase accordingly because as you understand from this graph or from this particular equation that id is a function of vgs and as vgs increases then id will also increase so if v in is added in series with this particular v1 then obviously the gate to source voltage drop is also increasing and accordingly the drain current will also increase so now what we can do is we can identify this variation small signal variation or this particular variation by means of this particular notation we can write this small v capital gs which is nothing but the total instantaneous voltage between the gate to source terminal or you can also consider this is the voltage which is applied at the gate terminal because the source is already grounded so the same notation as you have used for uh, bjt amplifier also so the same notation so this is nothing but the summation of these two signal that is v1 the dc component plus v in so v1 is a quantity which does not change with time because it's a battery so it does not change with time and v in which is a function of time and their combination their summation is nothing but lower case v and upper case gs that means the total instantaneous gate to source voltage now when this particular voltage is applied over here between the gate to source of this particular mos then obviously there will be a modulation in the current the current cannot be constant 
so this this expression id was written for a constant vgs because this vgs this this one is is a dc quantity it doesn't vary with time now when this vgs also consists of a time varying component then the corresponding current i can write this current as so the same notation i capital d so this is nothing but capital i capital d that is the dc current plus the time varying component so these are nothing but the total instantaneous values for currents and voltage so from this equation what i can write is small id so this small id small i capital d is because of the application of small v capital gs so i can write this expression as half mu n c ox w by l into small v capital gs minus vth that is the threshold voltage whole square so then this can be written as half mu n c ox w over l and then small v capital gs is nothing but v1 plus v in so what i can do is i can write like this v1 minus vth whole square so now this v1 minus vth that particular thing is constant it doesn't change with time however this small v is a function of time so now what i can do is i can just keep this one outside and make it like this half mu n c ox w by l into v1 minus vth whole square multiplied with 1 plus v in divided by v1 minus vth whole square now this component half mu n c ox w over l v1 minus vth is what this is nothing but v1 minus vth whole square is what this is nothing but the trend current id because when the input signal is absent when v is equal to 0 I can write when v in is equal to 0, small v in is equal to 0, then this vgs is nothing but v1. So therefore, this small i capital D is or can be written as, so this entire thing outside the bracket is nothing but the DC current id multiplied with 1 plus v in upon v1 minus vth whole square so then ultimately we have found out that particular expression which relates the total instantaneous current with the dc current so now let me go to the next slide and just show you what is the implication of having this expression? So we have small i capital D is given by capital I capital D plus 1 plus V in divided by V1 minus Vth whole square. Now here uh, we will be uh, using certain assumption, certain approximation so that ultimately we can represent ID or small i small d which is nothing but the time varying component of the train current as a function as a linear function of the input voltage small v in so the approximation is if this small v in if this one is much much less than v1 minus vth so this is nothing but the dc overdrive v1 minus vth is the dc overdrive and if the amplitude of the input signal is much much small as compared to this particular factor then what i can do is 1 plus x whole square can be approximated so under this condition you know that 1 plus x whole square 
can be approximated to 1 plus 2x for x to be much much less than 1. So under this condition, this particular approximation is correct. So if I just uh, use this particular thing over here also, then small i capital D is given by capital I capital D into 1 plus 2v in divided by v1 minus vth. So this is nothing but id plus 2id times v in upon v1 minus vth. And this is equal to, as we have already mentioned, capital I capital D plus small i small d. So this uh, capital ID you can clearly identify from this expression and this particular thing small i small d which is nothing but the variation of the small signal current is given by 2 ID divided by V1 minus VTH multiplied with V in. So whenever we observe the same circuit so whenever you observe this particular circuit in the presence of two different signals which is a combination of a dc component v1 in series with a time varying component v in then the corresponding current which flows through this particular circuit between the drain to source of this device can be regarded having two different components one is the dc component that is capital i capital d and second one is the time varying component that is small i small d. So therefore, we can also visualize this particular circuit from two different aspects. So what are those two aspects? So let me just start with the first aspect. Let me just consider that uh, it's something like that. We have a circuit like, let me just very uh, briefly uh, let me just show you. Let's change the color. Yes. So that was my circuit. Complete circuit consisting of both the DC as well as the time varying signal. So these are the two voltage source V1 and V2 as we are using over here. This is RD and we have a V in input signal over here. So that is the circuit and the current which is flowing through this. This current is nothing but I capital D which is nothing but the summation of ID plus small i small d. So now we can visualize the same circuit from two divine aspects because already we have seen that this current small i capital D which is nothing but the total instantaneous drain current is having two different components. One is the DC component capital I capital D and second one is the time varying components small i small d. So now this particular circuit is having two different implications. First one is this one. Just use this one. So whenever uh, the drain current is nothing but capital I capital D, then uh, we have this MOS and the gate to source voltage is nothing but V1 then source is grounded. We have RD over here and V2. This one is RT. And then the current which flows through this circuit is capital I capital D. And then the second one is the current which is because of the time varying component 
v in this is because of the time varying component v in which is applied at the gate of this particular device and then we have rd over here and this terminal is grounded and this current is nothing but small i small d so if you just superimpose this to circuit electrically then ultimately what you have this circuit so if i call this circuit to be circuit a and if i call this circuit to be circuit b and this is circuit c so a is decomposed into two different sub circuit b and c respectively so in circuit b we have all the voltages and currents which are not a function of time or in other words this voltage v1 this voltage v2 and this id they are not a function of time they are constant on the other hand if i just consider this particular circuit c here we find v in that means the signal that you are applying at the gate terminal of this mos is a function of time it can be something like this maybe sinusoidal variation like this and then the corresponding current small i small d that is the drain current is also a function of time so that is the basic difference between these two circuits in circuit b all the voltages and currents they are not a function of time they are constant with respect to time so they are dc on the other hand if you just take a look at the circuit c then all these voltages i mean this v in and even if you calculate this particular voltage over here so this voltage is nothing but id times rt minus sign which is nothing but the output voltage for this particular circuit so this voltage this input voltage which is applied at the gate terminal and this particular drain current all of them are function of time and if you just combine these two circuits excuse me sir your presentation has stopped it's not visible okay have you seen the first uh, slide this one when did it stop from the so, second slide yeah from the second slide sir okay let me once again explain uh what we have is uh, this id is given by small i capital d is given by capital i capital d multiplied with 1 plus v in upon v1 minus vt is whole square so that we have derived already then if i uh, consider this uh, particular approximation is correct that uh, v in is much much less as compared to v1 minus vt h then what we have is small i capital d can be written as capital i capital d multiplied with 1 plus 2 v in by v1 minus vt h now that approximation is only correct when v in is much much less as compared to v1 minus vt h and then the total instantaneous current i capital d can be written as the summation of two component that is i capital d capital i capital d plus small i small d <coughs> sorry where this small i small d can be written as two id divided by v1 minus vt h into v in so based on this particular derivation what we can do is we can decompose this complete circuit if i if i regard this circuit as circuit a then i can uh, compose this particular i can decompose this particular circuit a into two sub circuits that is b and c now the circuit b consists of all the voltages and currents which are not a function of time or in other words all the voltages and currents that you see over here in circuit b they are constant 
they don't fluctuate with time. On the other hand, if I just consider this particular circuit C, so there you find this voltage, gate to source voltage, drain to source voltage, the drain to source current. So all these quantities, voltage and the current quantities, they are a function of time. So we can decompose this circuit into two different sub circuits electrically. And if we just once again combine these two circuits B and C together, we will be getting what is known as the circuit E. So now if you would like to model this circuit B and circuit C separately, then we must be having two different models for the MOS device. So let me just start with the circuit B. So, so in circuit B, what we have, we have one MOS whose source is grounded and a battery of magnitude V1 is connected to the gate of this particular MOS. And we have a resistance RD connected to the drain of this particular MOS along with the battery V2 whose other end is grounded. So now, considering this particular fact, if I would like to model this particular MOS, then how does it look like? Let me just change the color. So we know that between gate to source for any MOS device, there is no electrical connection. So what we have between gate to source, this open circuit and the corresponding voltage difference as we regard this voltage as VGS. So this is my gate terminal and this one is the source terminal. And there you have the drain terminal uh, I may call this to be said D. And between drain to source, as we have mentioned already in the last lecture, that since the MOS operates like a voltage control current source, so therefore we do have a voltage control current source like this, whose magnitude is given by half mu n. Okay, let me write down the magnitude over here. So the magnitude is given by half mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square. What is vgs? vgs is nothing but the voltage difference between these two terminals. So this is all about the description of the MOS working in the saturation region and when the voltage between the gate to source of a MOS device is a constant one. Now apart from that, if I just take a look at the circuit B, what we have, we have a voltage source, a constant voltage source, a battery connected between gate to ground. So this is nothing but V1. So let me connect this one. So we do have a battery connected between gate to source or gate to ground because source is already grounded here, as you can see. So this is nothing but V1. And what we have, we have a resistance of magnitude RD like this. And what else? another battery of magnitude V2. So this is the complete electrical model for this particular circuit, sub-circuit B. Now this is quite apparent if you just take a look at this particular equation because this ID here can be written as this ID is nothing but half mu n C ox W over L into V1 minus VTH whole square. So that can be easily verified from this diagram because VGS here is nothing but V1. You can easily check from this particular diagram. 
then what about the second circuit how can you model the second circuit now for the second circuit what you have is so for the second circuit one second between gate to source you don't have anything and that voltage difference is vgs so you should write this voltage like small vgs like this everything in small this is my gate terminal this one is a source which is already grounded let me call this to my source terminal fine let this be my drain terminal and we have a resistance rt connected between drain to ground like this then we have a current between drain to source now how can you model this particular current if you just take a look at this particular expression what you find is this current id small id small i small d which is applicable for the circuit c is given by 2 times capital i capital d divided by v1 minus vth multiplied with v in now this particular component 2 id divided by v1 minus vth i think you can remember this particular variable in fact hopefully in lecture 3 we have derived one expression which is evaluated to be 2 times id divided by v1 minus vth more specifically we have derived one quantity which is equal to which was equal to twice id divided by vgs minus vth and if you can remember it properly this this particular component or this particular variable is nothing but the transconductance or mutual conductance we have derived three different expressions for the mutual conductance or transconductance the most familiar expression is this one gm is given by mu n c ox w over l into vgs minus vth so this was obtained just by differentiating id with respect to vgs and we have also shown that gm can also be written as 2 times id divided by vgs minus vth and that was also equal to square root of 2 times id into mu n c ox w over n so we have three different parameters that we can control as we have mentioned last time one is id that is the drain current second one is the gate to source overdrive voltage vgs minus vth and third one is a wil that is the width to length that particular ratio wil ratio for a mos device since mu and c ox is a technology dependent parameter so this one is considered to be constant so now gm this mutual conductance or transconductance can be written as a function of any of the two variables either as a function of wil and gate source overdrive voltage or as a function of drain current and this gate source overdrive voltage or as a function of drain current and this wil ratio so in this particular example what you find is this v1 is nothing but the gate to source voltage under dc condition so this 2 id 2 times id divided by v1 minus vth is nothing but gm that is the transconductance or mutual conductance so this id this small i small d can be written as a product of two different variables one is gm that is the mutual conductance second one is the input voltage that is v in so between these two what we have this drain to source between drain to source we do have a current source that is fine and the magnitude of the current source can now be written as gm times vgs because as you know this vgs is nothing but v in for this particular case
So this one is V in, that is the input signal. So now if you just compare the corresponding models for circuit B, sub circuit B and sub circuit C, you can find one difference, one significant difference over here. The difference lies in the representation of the corresponding current source, which is present between the drain to source terminal. For an NMOS device, the direction of the current source is obviously from the drain end to the source end. As you know from the basic physics of a MOS device, the current will flow from the drain to source because for an NMOS device, if you apply some positive voltage at the drain terminal with respect to the source terminal, then the electrons will be attracted towards the drain end. So a positive current will flow from the drain end to the source end. So that direction is fixed from drain to source for an NMOS device. Now, when the input signal, which is applied between the gate to source of a MOS is a constant quantity, if it does not vary with time, then we can write down that expression of current source as a voltage dependent current source. And that expression can be regarded or can witness like this, half mu and C ohms W over L VGS minus VTS whole square, which is applicable for the DC quantity, that means when this particular gate to source voltage is constant, when it doesn't vary with time. On the other hand, for the sub circuit C, we can also write down the expression for the small signal current, small i, small d, and that can be regarded as, once again, as a voltage dependent current source, because that is the property of the MOS device. So the current, the output current, which flows between drain to source, can be written as, can be expressed as a voltage dependent current source. And now the dependence is written in terms of the mutual conductance or transconductance. That is GM times VGS. What is VGS? VGS is nothing but the voltage difference between the gate and the source terminal of the MOS under consideration. And remember here, when you talk about this particular sub circuit C, all the voltages and all the currents that we are talking about all of them are varying with time. So they are not fixed with respect to time, rather they vary with respect to time. Now this expression or this particular model is valid under only one approximation, under only one assumption, which assumption we have already made over here. The assumption is that V in, that means the input signal must be much, much less as compared to the DC overdrive voltage, which is V1 minus VTH. For example, if I consider that the threshold voltage to be say 0.5 volt and the applied gate to source DC potential V1 is let it be say 0.8 volt or so, then this uh, difference V1 minus VTH is nothing but 0.3 volt. So the input voltage must be much, much less as compared to 0.3 volt. So might be few millivolts. So if I consider that my input voltage V in, is given by say 5 millivolt or 10 millivolt, then this 5 millivolt or 10 millivolt is considered to be significantly small with respect to 0.3 volt or 0.2 volt. So under this condition only, this particular assumption is correct. And then you can represent this current source, which is present between drain to source by means of this particular quantity that is GM times VGS. So now if you just uh, once again uh, take a look at this uh, particular ID VGS characteristics curve, here you find that already we have mentioned this one. This is the point. Uh, let me just change the color. So this is the point where uh, this is biased. And uh, now it, it is V1. So instead of writing V dash, uh, I can write this to be say V1. Let me just erase this one. This part, it's not I dashed or V dashed. To be consistent, uh, it will be better to write it like V1 and ID like this. So let it be V1 and let this current be ID or it will be ID or ID1. Okay. So now, if this is my V1 
and over and above this v1 you have a small variation of the input signal which is something like that so this small variation is all about the input signal v in now if this variation is small enough with respect to the gate to source overdrive voltage dc overdrive voltage then what we have is uh, the corresponding current it should be even small it should be even small anyway then the corresponding current will have a fluctuation from this point to this point so the corresponding current will have a fluctuation from this point to this point so for the purpose of drawing i have just extended this one to a relatively larger value but it should be even small so i can call this point to be say say id dashed this point to be say id double dashed so the corresponding variation between id dashed to id double dashed should be pretty small so that this slope can be regarded to be constant because already we have uh, evaluated the expression for this slope and if you can remember this slope is nothing but gm that is nothing but delta it upon delta vgs and which is not constant because ultimately you are finding out the slope of a parabolic function so for a parabolic function the slope cannot be constant and this was evaluated to be mu n c ox times w by l into vgs minus vth so the slope is also a function of this particular variable vgs so the slope is not constant now if you assume that the corresponding variation of vgs is small with respect to this dc component v1 then this vgs minus vt is that can be regarded to be almost constant i mean vgs can be regarded to be almost constant so therefore this slope of the parabola within this part of the graph can be considered to be almost constant and then you can work with a constant gm however if you increase the value i mean if i just consider that okay the variation of the input signal is something like that from this point to this point then comes back over here and from this point to this point now if the variation is large then you cannot consider the previous approximation that means v in is much much less than v1 minus vt is to be valid and therefore the notion of constant gm will not be valid under this condition so we can only write down this expression small id is equal to gm times v in which is equal to twice id times v in upon v1 minus vt so this is only true if this condition is true if this condition holds good and this condition if this condition holds good then the signal that you're talking about is known as a small signal this is known to be small signal and the corresponding model is known to be a small signal model for a mos device so therefore whenever we will analyze any mos circuits then obviously we have to analyze from two different perspectives one is first one is the calculating the bias points given a particular vgs and a particular vds you need to find out what about the drain current and accordingly you can also find out what about the drain to source potential over here so this will give you the corresponding operating point or bias points and for the calculation of that particular bias point you can take the help of this model in which case you have three terminals like gate source and drain between gate to source you have basically open circuit but the open circuit voltage is there because that voltage is responsible this vgs is responsible for the creation of the channel between the drain to source and when this gate to source voltage is greater than and even if i can tell you that uh, this particular symbol or this particular circuit is only applicable is only valid when the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage if the channel is not created then obviously there is no question of having this particular model to be valid so this entire thing has been drawn under the condition that the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage so that is assumption and the second assumption is that we are working in the saturation region so then in the saturation region the drain to source current can be modeled as a voltage dependent current source which is given by half mu n c ox w bar l into vgs minus vt h whole square 
Now that is true whenever we are talking about the DC component only. I mean, all the voltages and the currents in the circuit, they are constant with respect to time. So they don't vary with, with respect to time. On the other hand, whenever we will work with the time varying component, time varying signals like V in and V out, then obviously this particular circuit will not help us. In that particular case, what we need to do is that we have to change the corresponding notations. That is quite fine because I cannot write any more capital V, capital G, capital S, rather small VGS because now it is in the small signal mode. And then the current, you can represent this current as once again as a time varying uh, component and as a voltage dependent component just by multiplying this voltage difference with the transconductance of the MOS device, which is nothing but GM times PGS. And this one is perfect. This one is valid. If this condition holds good, that means if the input voltage is much, much less as compared to the DC overdrive voltage. Now with this basic understanding, let us now uh, uh, consider a typical circuit. And let's check. Let's consider a typical circuit and let's check uh, how does this uh, small signal model look like for this circuit. Let's consider a circuit like this. We have a battery, constant voltage battery in series with the signal source. So let it be V1, let it be V in. We have a resistance connected between source and the ground. This time the source is not directly connected to the ground. We have another resistance, a drain resistance in series with a voltage source V2 like this. This one is RT. Now we are interested in drawing the small signal model of this particular circuit. How does it look like? So now you understand that first of all, we have to identify the three terminals, the gate terminal, drain terminal and the source terminal. So had this been my gate terminal and this been my source terminal, then between gate to source, basically we have an open circuit. And this is my voltage difference VGS, small VGS. Now the source is not directly connected to ground, rather it is connected to ground through a resistance RS. So a resistance RS must be there, must be placed like this. And this point is connected to the ground. So this one is RS. Now if this may be drain terminal, drain end, then between drain to source, we have a voltage dependent current source whose magnitude is given by GM times VGS. I mean GM times this one, this component. And then what we have, we have a resistance RD. And then this terminal is connected to ground. And in the input side, you have this particular signal that is V in. This is all about the small signal model of this particular circuit. So whenever you find any constant quantity in the composite circuit, then you have to eliminate this constant quantity. In the small signal model, we will take a look on those particular quantities which will vary with time or those elements which will respond against any time varying quantity. So that's why these resistances are over there. RS, RD, so they are present in the small signal model as well as in the DC model because they can also 
provide corresponding voltage against a DC current as well as the time varying current. However, if I have a capacitor over there, then the capacitor must be absent in the DC model because you know for the capacitor, the corresponding reactance provided to the DC component, if A is equal to zero, the frequency equal to zero, then the reactance provided by the capacitor is going to be infinite. So if I have a voltage source like this, a constant voltage source like this in the composite model or composite circuit, let it be say a voltage source, say V dashed. So this is in the composite circuit like this. So from the composite circuit, we have to synthesize the small signal model. So this is there in the composite circuit. So this is there in the composite circuit. Now, as you understand this V dash, this particular battery will provide ideal battery, ideal voltage source. So it will provide a constant voltage with respect to time. So there is no change in the amount of voltage. So there is no time varying component. So therefore, if, if I regard this point to be a point A and this point to be a point B, so if in the composite circuit, this particular battery is present like this, then in the small signal equivalent circuit, what you have between A to B, since there is no fluctuation between A to B, if you measure the corresponding voltage difference, this will be constant always. This will be constant throughout, no matter whatever be the time. So that will not be reflected in the small signal model, which only deals with the time varying component. So since there is no time varying component between A to B, so this is basically identified by a simple short circuit. This is identified by short circuit in the small signal equivalent model. So in the small signal equivalent model or small signal equivalent circuit, it is nothing but this. Between A to B, you have a simple short circuit because there is no voltage change between these two points. On the other hand, if I have a current source like this, once again, let me consider a constant current source, I dash between say A to B to A, the direction of the current is from B to A, then what happens in the small signal equivalent circuit? Because if you measure the current through an ammeter, you'll find that between B to A, the amount of current is always constant. It doesn't change its time. It's a constant current. So what I mean to say is that it will provide something like this. For the voltage, it will be constant throughout V dash. And for the current, so these are the properties of the ideal voltage and the current source. So the current will remain constant, I dash. So there is no change with respect to time. That means in the small semiconductor circuit, we should not have any current between B to A because there is no fluctuation of current with respect to time. So in the small semiconductor circuit, this is identified by an open circuit. So this is short circuit. So this is short circuit and this one is open circuit. So whenever you find any uh, voltage source in the composite circuit, constant voltage source in the composite circuit, now substitute this voltage source by means of a short circuit in the small single equivalent circuit. Similarly, if you have a current source, constant current source in the composite circuit, then it should be replaced by an open circuit in the small single equivalent model. So the same thing we have done over here also, as you can see, we have this one, this mod. So this MOS is modeled by means of this particular thing. Moreover, you can also find out that, or you can also visualize that this particular current, this I small i capital D is having two components, capital I capital D plus small i small d. So you may visualize that we have two different current sources between drain to source. One is because of capital I capital D and second one is because of small i small d. 
However, in the small scale increment model, the current source corresponding to capital I capital D will be simply eliminated because between drain to source, this current component is always constant. So in the small signal model, we can get rid of that. Similarly, we have this particular voltage source V1 connected between gate to this particular voltage, this particular point. Now in the composite circuit, we have this V1. So in the small signal equivalent model, it should be substituted or replaced by means of a short circuit. Same is the case for V2 as well. However, this RD and RS, so these are the resistances and they are sensitive to the current and voltage of any frequency. Let it be a DC frequency or any high frequency or low frequency. So since they are sensitive, these resistances RD and RS to any of the frequencies, so they are present in the DC model as well as in the small signal model. So now uh, what we have uh, seen so far, we have uh, obtained uh, the small signal model for a MOS circuit, taking into account the notion of small signal. We have already identified that the small signal, the notion of small signal is only applicable if the magnitude of the input voltage is much, much small with respect to the gate through source overdrive voltage. Now this entire calculation, what we have done so far is based on the fact that we have so far neglected the channel length modulation. We have started our discussion by considering that ID is given by half mu and C ox W over L into VGS minus VT is whole square. So we have just considered that, okay, the current, the drain current is a function of gate to source voltage only. And accordingly, we have modeled this drain current as a voltage dependent current source just like this. But if you are accurate enough, then you must understand that this gate to source voltage, I mean, sorry, drain to source uh, current is also a function of gate to source voltage and the drain to source voltage. So if you would like to take into account the notion of channel length modulation, then what I can write is I have to write this ID as half mu n C ox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square into one plus lambda VDS. So if I consider that the channel and modulation is there, then ID can be written as a function of VGS as well as VDS, that is a drain to source voltage. So far we have seen that because of the, the change in the gate to source voltage, the corresponding current ID changes. The next question is that, can the current ID change because of the change in the drain to source voltage VTS? The answer is yes, because already we have seen that in the ID VTS characteristics curve for a fixed VGS, for a fixed VGS, if we just want to draw the variation, so it is something like that. So this is the ideal case if uh, lambda is equal to zero and if lambda is non-zero, then it is something like that. And that is because of the channel and modulation. So the drain current is also for a fixed value of VGS. So that was drawn for a fixed VGS. If you change the VGS value, then accordingly, you know, this is for fixed VGS. So if you change the VGS value, then the peak will be modified. If you reduce the VGS value, then the peak will be less. And if you increase the VGS value, then the peak will be at a larger value. So for a fixed VGS, the graph looks something like that. And which says that in the saturation region, there is a dependence of ID on VDS. Now, how can you model this particular variation or how can you model this particular dependence of ID on VDS? So to answer this question, first of all, what you need to do is that you have to write down the expression for the total instantaneous current, keeping in mind the channel and modulation in operation. So the total instantaneous current ID for a fixed VGS, 
total instantaneous drain current id for a fixed bgs can be written as half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth full square into now what i can write in place of 1 plus lambda vds now it should be 1 plus lambda capital vds plus small vds because this is current this current is because of the combination of two voltages the dc component as well as the tampering component now that can be written as like half mu n c ox w over l pgs minus vth whole square 1 plus lambda capital vds multiplied with lambda small vds Now this entire thing half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square into 1 plus lambda vds is nothing but your dc current that is i d sorry uh, i have made a mistake over there yeah lambda vds will be there but once again you have the other component that is half mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth whole square times lambda small vds so this one plus lambda capital vds plus small vds can be divided into two components one plus lambda vds and 1 plus lambda capital VDS and lambda small VDS. So then this part, half mu and C ox W over L, VGS minus VTH whole square into 1 plus lambda VDS is nothing but ID, that is the drain current under DC condition. And we can also regard this one approximately, this particular thing, half mu and C ox W over L, half mu and C ox W over L, VGS minus VTH whole square, to be, to be approximately equal to ID. Although this is not exactly equal to ID because we have neglected the channel modulation in the second part of this equation. So now this can be regarded as approximately to ID plus ID times lambda VDS. And you know this ID small i capital D is having two components. That is capital I capital D plus small i small d so from that we can write like small i small d can be approximately equal to capital i capital d into lambda vds small vds now which suggests that the variation the small signal variation the small signal variation of the drain current also depends upon the corresponding variation of the drain to source voltage. So far we have neglected the dependence of small signal drain current on the small signal drain to source voltage. We have just considered in the last example that the drain current in this particular example we have assumed that the variation in the drain to source current or drain current is only because of the gate to source fluctuation, the gate to source voltage dependence. But if we cannot neglect the channel in modulation, then you know that the drain to source current or drain current can also be regarded as a function of the drain to source voltage. And this expression guarantees that particular phenomenon that ID small ID is equal to capital ID into lambda into VDS. So now if you'd like to find out the variation of this ID with respect to VDS, now what you can do is you can simply take this variation id upon vds so this id upon vds is coming out to be lambda id 
or in other words if you would like to find out this vds divided by id this is given by 1 by lambda id so therefore the drain to source current or drain current is also modulated because of the change in the drain to source voltage and that variation can be obtained like this vds upon id is given by 1 upon lambda id now this situation is little bit different what we have seen last time last time what we have seen is we have found out that the drain current can vary because of or we can modulate the drain current because of the corresponding change between the gate to source voltage so the voltage is applied between the gate and source terminal so the voltage is applied between these two terminal between gate and source and accordingly there was a change in the current value between these two terminal so the terminals are different one is between gate to source the voltage difference between gate to source and the current difference between drain to source so that's why we have modeled the drain current as a voltage dependent current source over here but this time what we find is if we change the drain to source voltage by some amount then the current will also change accordingly so the voltages so the voltage component and the current component so both of them are considered with respect to the same two points that is drain and source and this gives rise to the notion of a resistance so that resistance if i if i remember that r not is nothing but suppose you have let me just consider suppose you have a situation like this you have a resistance connected between two points a and b and suppose you don't know what is the amount of the resistance suppose some resistance r is connected between a and b but if you would like to measure the value of the resistance just by measuring the voltage and current so how to do that you just measure the voltage between these two points a and b and find out the current which is flowing through this take the ratio vab upon iab that will give you the corresponding resistance r so here also we are doing the same thing because of the change in the drain to source voltage the corresponding current drain current is modified so this gives rise to a notion of a resistance and that resistance has to be connected between the drain and the source terminal so taking this channel length modulation into our account then ultimately the composite small signal model for a mos device looks something like that so this is the composite model by considering only one second order effect that is the channel length modulation we have other second order effect as well that we have not considered so far that is the body effect anyway so as of now what we have done is so these are the three terminals this is my gate terminal this is the drain terminal and this one is a source terminal so between gate to source you have a voltage difference let it be say vgs between drain to source because of the change in this vgs the drain to source current will be modulated will be modified and that can be written as gm times vgs that is the one part of the drain current and the second part of the drain current because of the change in this voltage if there is some change in the drain to source voltage then the corresponding current also gets modulated so therefore this is identified by a resistance connected between the drain and the source terminal which is written like r not which is equal to 1 upon lambda id now check if lambda is equal to 0 that means r not equal to infinite r not is going to be or lambda is equal to 0 implies lambda is equal to 0 implies r not to be equal to infinite
that means there is no connection between rain to, I mean, this resistance is absent between rain to source, as we have done previously. We have initially started with lambda is equal to zero. That means no channel length modulation. No channel length modulation. However, if lambda is non-zero, if lambda is non-zero, that means R naught is finite. And if it is finite, then you have to include it in the small signal model. However large it may be, you have to include it. And that means channel length modulation exists. It suggests that channel length modulation exists. Okay, so we have two different conditions. So in one case, for lambda is equal to zero, when you have a situation like this, the current is remaining constant in saturation region. That means there is no impact of drain to source voltage on the drain current. So lambda is equal to zero. So this resistance is becoming infinite. That means there is no connection between drain to source by virtue of this resistance. On the other hand, if lambda is non-zero, but some value like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, then obviously, the corresponding value of R0 is going to be finite and you have to include the value of R0 or you have to include this resistance in the small signal model between the drain to source. So yet I can tell you that this particular model is not the complete model for the MOS. This is not the complete small signal model. We have incorporated only one second order effect that is the channel length modulation. Now we have not discussed about what is meant by the body effect so far we have assumed that the body or substrate of the device is connected to the source. So these two, these two terminals are tied up together. So that's why we have considered this MOS as a three terminal device having three terminals like gate, drain and source. But remember that uh, the MOS is having the other uh, terminal as well, which is known as the body or bulk or substrate. And if the substrate potential and the source potential, they are not same, then it gives rise to another effect another second order effect for which the drain current also varies. And this effect is known as the body effect, which I'll be discussing in some later classes. And because of the impact of the body effect, there will be a change in the small signal model of this particular MOS. So in lecture five, what we have done, let me just summarize what we have done today. Uh, we have uh, started with our discussion in uh, lecture four, uh, that means the notion of biasing, what is the need of biasing, what is the necessity of biasing. And from that, uh, we have established that the total instantaneous current of a MOS device, when it is, uh, it is present in a simple circuit like this, uh, can be written as a function of two different component. One is the DC component and second one is the time heading small signal component. And we have also mentioned what is meant by the small signal. When can we regard a signal to be a small signal? The condition we have established over here. And for a composite circuit involving MOS device, we can also decompose the same circuit into two defined sub circuits. One due to the presence of only the DC voltage and DC currents. And second one is due to the presence of only the time varying components. And for each of the circuits, we have also uh, shown you the corresponding models for the MOS device. More specifically, the drain to source current under DC condition can be written like this half mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. However, when you talk about the small signal component, then this DC current, then this current between drain to source can be written as a voltage dependent current source which is nothing but GM times VGS, where VGS is the small signal voltage difference between gate and source terminal and GM is the transconductance or mutual conductance. And this approximation is valid if and only if the small the notion of small signal is applicable, otherwise not. And then uh, for a typical circuit, we have uh, developed the corresponding small signal model we have identified how can we model the constant voltage and constant current source in the composite circuit to a small signal equivalent model. And ultimately, uh, we have come across the notion of uh, channel and modulation. 
and how does the drain current vary with respect to the drain to source voltage because of channel length modulation we know it from our discussion in the last class and today we have also incorporated the same thing in the small signal model by adding a resistance r not between the drain to source terminal whose value is equal to 1 upon lambda id so that is all about the small signal model of a mos device and with the help of this small signal model uh, from the next class onwards we will be stepping forward to the design of mos amplifiers